Have you heard of catfishing? Basically, it's when crooks pretend to be someone they're not. The result? Well, a senior could become the victim of a romance scam, a tech support scam, an impersonation scam, or a variety of other scams. Eric Olson, executive director of the Helps Nonprofit Law Firm, has helped seniors who've been catfished. In this video, the attorney explains what catfishing is, its history, how it impacts seniors, why seniors are vulnerable to this evil practice, its warning signs, and where to turn for help if you feel you're being catfished. Because I'm in LA and Eric is in Oregon, we'll be conducting the interview via Zoom. Hey, it's Jeff Hoyt, Editor-in-Chief of SeniorLiving.org. And once again, I have the pleasure of speaking with Eric Olson. Eric's an attorney and the founder of the Helps Nonprofit Law Firm. Thanks for taking the time, Eric. Good to be here with you, Jeff. So today I want to talk about catfishing and people impersonating other people. Um, I'm not sure a lot of seniors understand what the terms mean. So what is catfishing and how does it mainly affect seniors? Essentially, it's the creation of an online false persona. Uh, and the purpose ultimately is virtually always to commit financial fraud. Now, what do, what do I mean by an online false persona? Catfishing wasn't around before the internet. If it was, it was it was really unusual because what the internet allows is it allows people to to create create an image. Maybe they uh, maybe they'll you know maybe a Facebook page or or you know they can get different emails and they they can go on a dating app or they can make themselves whoever they want to be, uh, even use a picture maybe not of themselves someone else. I think the term was coined around 2010, and then there was a program called catfishing. I don't know if it's still out there or not. And then I remember when I first heard about it was a football player for Notre Dame, and he was catfished by a person, a woman that he fell in love with. Now I don't think it was financial, but it was it was on all the it was it was on all the news, and it was kind of embarrassing for this guy. Uh, so that's what it is. It's when Persons create a false persona and um, use that to take advantage of someone financially. So before the internet, I could call you up and pretend to be someone I'm not, whether the government or uh, uh, police, but it'd be hard for me to impersonate that I'm a 29-year-old woman who's interested in dating you. True. Now, with the internet, you could you know, create a website or you can create a, you know, you can have a lot more information about yourself that people could read about. So how big a problem is catfishing for seniors? It's big, and it's getting bigger. Uh, the Federal Trade Commission last year uh, reported that, you know, that younger people can be catfished, and they report it a lot, but seniors don't report it as much, but they suffer proportionally a higher financial burden. They're, they're one scam for more money than younger people. Um, and the estimate was it it went from 1 billion to 1.5 billion in one year in losses for for seniors uh that were catfished and that's just the people who are reporting it yeah i think a lot of seniors don't want to report it or they hide it or they're embarrassed about it understandable but the more you report it the better the odds are of catching the person who's doing it and preventing them from doing it to somebody else exactly so why are seniors so vulnerable to catfishing there's a lot of reasons okay um I think one reason is maybe there's perception, and it's true too. Seniors as a group, a lot of them have more money, okay? But that doesn't necessarily mean that lower income or poor seniors can't be catfished. They can, and they are all the time. Um, but there's a perception that they have money. Uh, they might, Some seniors might be more dependent on others. As a rule, I think society recognizes that seniors are more trusting maybe than younger people. They've been around a lot longer. Uh, they they think the best of other people. Um, some of them may have lost family members. Maybe it's a widow or a widower, uh, and they're alone, or their kids are live far away. Um, and they expect others to act honestly. Uh, and then also there's the fact that as we age, uh, I'm 73, but you 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 start to decline a little bit cognitively. Okay, uh, I don't. 
I don't see that happening, but I see little things. And so the fact is, the older we get, sometimes, you know, things might become a little bit more difficult. So there's a whole range of reasons why seniors are more susceptible to being catfished than younger people. And in your position, it helps. You're helping people who have been scammed. So what kind of catfishing have you seen? An ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure, Jeff. Okay. And this is one reason why it, catfishing is so terrible is because what I mean, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. If you've been catfished, you've lost money. And the guys that do this, it's almost impossible to recover the money. Some seniors get scammed for hundreds of thousands of dollars. Okay. They lose, and I'll give you, I can give you examples, but they lose a lot of money. Uh, and so there's no one to sue. They, they disappear. They have an anonymous persona. Where, where are they? And there's so much of it, you know, the law enforcement can't really go after them. You know, if you live in one state or one city, the catfish person doing catfishing may be across the country. They could be overseas. So it's really important that you know about this and you prevent it from happening at the beginning. So what kind of, what do we see? <laughs> I guess the most common type of catfishing is the romance scam. So how does the romance scam work? I'll give an example. Um, a few years ago, I had a realtor call me and, uh, you know, helps, you know, we represent people all over the country. Uh, we don't give legal advice. We don't want to represent people in court, but, you know, we give legal information. Well, this realtor called me and it was in where I live. And the realtor said, Hey, Eric, there's this elderly person that I'm trying to sell a home. And I think she's being scammed out of her home. And uh, she told me a little bit, I said, well, and it turned out she lived in the part of town where I live. And I said, can you bring her in the office? And I brought her, she brought her in the office and she was in her eighties. And I started asking her questions and yeah, she was being definitely being catfish with the romance scam. And I talked to her and explained what was going on. And we were able to temporarily put a stop to it, but this guy just never gave up. So, you know, it, it's, it's, it's kind of a brutal scam. Uh, you know, there's a lot of dating sites. There's a lot of seniors that or their spouses pass away and it can happen to, it doesn't, it's not only widows, it's widowers. You know, it doesn't matter if you're a man or woman anyone and there's these websites where you can get on there and advertise and then someone contacts you uh and statistically everything i've read is that romance scams are increasing dramatically there's just a big problem with it so how can seniors protect themselves what kind of warning signs should they look out for in terms of being catfished in a romance scam i did talk to this client what happened to her is the kind of a sign that happens all the time you know it happened really quick. She fell in love. He tried to manipulate her emotions. Uh, he used terms of endearment. Uh, he talked about marriage. He was very active on messaging her, messaging her, you know, even calling her on the phone. Uh, everything he could to try to build an intimate relationship with her. Um, now, this guy didn't have any profile on the internet, so to speak, but he told a good story. Uh, uh, also he had an accent. Okay. Uh, but some of these guys, they, they might send a picture and sometimes it may be just a partial picture. Um, but the biggest red flag to know if you're being part of a romance scam is the whole purpose of it. Eventually they're going to ask for money. Okay. And that's what happened in this, this, this person's case. Um, he needed money to pay taxes. He had a real good job. He was a banker, but he won the steeplechase or something like that. I don't know. What, and he had to pay taxes to get the money. Um, so he asked for money. Uh, and then there was a couple times that, you know, they arranged to meet. But he always had an emergency that came up and couldn't meet with her. And that's a good sign. And sometimes a romance scam is they'll use the emergency as an excuse of why they need you to give them money. Oh, in other words, hey, I was coming to see you and I got into a car accident and I need money. I'm in the hospital sort of thing. Anything like that. Yeah. Or my kids were hurt or I, yeah, it could be any, any reason like that. I need money. That's what it's going to work up to. 
but they cultivate you before they get to that point. Depends on the individual. And, you know, the seniors might be in love with this person. They, they, they feel like they could trust them. And that's what's so brutally terrible about this scam is it's so personal. And, you know, sometimes I've talked to seniors that are involved in a romance scam and they just don't want to believe that they're being scammed. They just almost refuse to believe it. That was the case with this person. And that's also where the shame comes from, too. When they realize they have been scammed, that they're ashamed of and they don't tell anybody about it because they're too embarrassed. Yeah, that's one reason why they don't want to admit it. So other than romance scams, what other forms of catfishing are there? Catfishing involves someone has a different persona and they try to convince you there's someone else. And it doesn't necessarily have to be, you know, a personal communication. It can be in writing. OK, uh, sometimes a person might get a notice from the IRS or or they might get a, a telephone call from the IRS. More is, is what I mean. The IRS will never call you. OK, they don't do that. And they try to scare you that someone might try to scare you. You got to pay these taxes or you're going to be in problem. Um, another one that I've seen is you've won a sweepstake. I remember I had a gentleman come in a few years ago and he won a publisher's clearing, clearing house sweepstakes, but he had to pay taxes on it. And um, they told him, well, you have to go to Target and get a debit card and don't tell any your bank what you're doing because we don't want them to know because you know, and they gave him an excuse. He ended up losing $40,000 eventually trying to get his publisher's clearinghouse award. In fact, I think the FTC sued the publishing clearing um, house about their procedures because it was, it's been such a big problem. And they had to pay a lot of money to the government to help educate people and also correct their procedures because people were thinking they were winning the publisher's clearing clearinghouse sweepstakes and but they weren't and they were being subject to scammers letting them think that they were winners so that's that's one that's common um but the clue is what they do it's, they try to get money from you 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 know get a debit card give me access to your bank account we need to pay this little fee and they'll do one thing after another so I don't know about you, but once a week I get a phony invoice from the Geek Squad of Best Buy or from Norton. So a real common scam for seniors. In fact, uh, I read some statistics. In 2020, at least 66% of tech support scams were the victims were 60 years of age or older. And they suffered back it's $116 million in losses, probably more than that. So I'm 73. Um, I don't. I didn't really get a computer till, you know, like 10 years after my practice. I mean, it it took a while and I'm not really computer savvy that much. I, I try to be, I've got kids that are great. And so a lot of seniors are, have a, a problem with technology. Okay. Um, and so they need help. And so the scammers use tech support as a way to scam. I mean, I think, you may have told me at one time, and I know I've gotten a letter from the Geek Squad, and they say, if you don't do call us within a certain time, you're going to get billed $400. And they want to, this is a scammer. They want you to call them, so you give them a, okay, they want to get your credit card number or something so they can cancel it. But they're really going to charge you. So there's all kinds of computer scams. I mean, if you get on the you get on the internet and you type in maybe a wrong website or something like that. Someone might say, oh, you need to, you need to get this protection. The whole idea is to try to take advantage of seniors and scam them. So yeah, it's a big problem. Yeah. I always tell people if a phone number pops up on your computer, like don't call it. Cause that's just an ad from a scammer. It makes it look like your computer has been uh, hacked or really the phone number is just the one that uh, that's where the hacking really begins. When you call, you end up, losing money on the deal you know sometimes you get it on your cell phone and i see that you know i just i just shut my phone off okay and just and then it seems to go away and the same thing works with your computer if you just shut same down your with your computer, computer. restart just, it just get out of there don't don't give them don't give them any reason or any personal information again seniors are trusting and someone calls they're trying to help you and they talk sweetly and softly and oh you give them this information no they're trying to take advantage of you 
speaking of modern technology, AI is all over the news. I assume that there are crooks, catfish who are using AI to uh, uh, to help them steal money from seniors. I think we've only begun to just begun to see it. I think it's going to get really sophisticated. I mean, I've heard that a, 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 a person can call you on the phone and have you say something, yes or no, then get your voice, okay? And then they can use that, record it, and then use that to try to convince you later or convince someone else to try to scam you. Uh, I'll give you an example, okay? Another common scam, you don't hear about a lot, but it happens is a grandparent scam, okay? And I had a good friend where this happened to a few years ago, she came to me in church and said, Eric, I think I got scammed. I, in fact, I know I got scammed. And I said, well, what happened? I said, well, I was at home and I got a call from my grandson. And he was back on the East Coast and he was in jail. And the sheriff was there with him. And he was saying, Grandma, I can't get a home. Mom and Dad, I'm in jail. I got to get out. Uh, I need, you know, like $2,400 for bail to get out. I didn't do anything, but I have to get this paid. Can you help me, Grandma? And and then a man got on the phone and said, yeah, this is Sheriff so-and-so, you know. And she ended up wiring or whatever, $2,400. And it turned out this was not her grandson, you know. It, but it sounded like him and stuff. So if something like that were to happen, there's ways to prevent it. You First off, if that happens, you're probably being scammed. Second off, you can start asking some personal information. Okay, so what's your birthday? You know, where did you go to high school? <laughs> You know, uh, what's your girlfriend's name or or what's your little sister's name? You know, they're not going to know that. But with the Internet, you get so many you know, information about people and their families. You can see how this could happen. And grandmothers and grandfathers, especially grandmothers, they love their grandkids. They don't want them in jail. And so they're going to do whatever they can to get them out when, in fact, they're not in jail. It's just a scammer. Yeah, I've heard about people whose voices are cloned from videos they posted to Facebook and social media that they can just take those voices and get them to say things based on the um, AI as well. So, right. so, um, so there's a lot of potential problems for seniors out there. Um, what can one do to prevent it? You talked about if you see uh, call tech support of this number on your computer or phone, just shut it off and reboot and it should go away. Right. What other things can people do to stop from well, being Like kept? I said, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of can, of cure, okay? So I talk to some people, I tell people that have been, if you've been scammed once, that makes you a candidate to be scammed again. I know for a fact that scammers share information about who they've scammed, and they trade that with each other. And if they've been able to scam you once, they're, they may turn over to someone else to try to scam you in another way. I've heard the story too many times. Now, sometimes I'll tell people, Hey, you got to get a different phone number. Okay. Now I've had my cell phone number for many years. Okay. But I thought, you know, if I changed my phone number, it wouldn't be any big deal. I just let my brothers and sisters know my kids, those that are important, it wouldn't be the end of the world. And if I was being scammed and I changed my phone number, then that person wouldn't be able to get a hold of me. It'd be the same on the internet. I could change my, uh, it might be more difficult for me, but for, but I could, I, my email address, get a different email address. If they can't contact you, you can't be scammed. So that's one easy way to, to stop the scam. The other thing too is we, we tell everyone it helps. You know, we help people all over the country. Anyone can call helps, whether they're a member of helps or not, and talk to us and say, hey, I think I'm being scammed and tell us a story and we'll be able to tell you, okay, if you are being scammed or give you a good indication that you're being scammed. And I do that all the time with people. They they write in to me. They write an email. Am I am I being scammed? In fact, I, it was this morning. Uh, in fact, here's another example. You know, it was a a supposed debt collector, but it wasn't a legitimate debt collector. And they sent me an email saying, you know, they they threatened to sue me. They threatened to do this. And I said, well, you know, they, that's illegal what they're saying. And I I googled. The name of the debt collector, I think it was Davis Law Group, something like that. And I put scam on the internet and boom, all these web, all these information showed up on the internet talking about this scam that this supposed company was doing. So sometimes you could Google 
whoever's contacting you scam and there'll be information that will pop up. And same with romance scams. There, there are actually companies or organizations that will investigate someone and a lot of the time they'll do it for free and let you know if this person's legitimate or not. There's, so there's help for people that are victims of scammers or they're being scammed. They, you you got to stop it. An ounce of uh, prevention is worth a pound of cure. And someone can always reach out to help. Um, we'll put their phone number on the screen, but you're happy to take calls from people who think they may be involved in a romance scam or some other kind of catfishing scam. Always. Our main purpose is to protect seniors from debt collector harassment. And, uh, and our second purpose is to educate seniors how they can maintain their financial independence. And, and, that's what this is. We we want them to be independent financially. We don't want them to use, lose their hard-earned savings that they've accumulated over a lifetime. We don't want that to happen. We appreciate your efforts there. Yeah. And let's just wrap up by, uh, I just want to know, like, why is it called catfishing? Good question. And I've thought about it. And there's kind of a mystery where they came with the word. But I, I have you ever been catfishing? Uh, no, I have. Done I mean, I'm talking about fishing for catfish. Not right. not no. not catfishing, but fishing for catfish. No, right? No, I've not. I've fished a lot for catfish. Okay, and let me tell you about catfish. Okay, uh, they're slimy, really slimy. They don't have scales. Okay, uh, they have spines. They have one on the top, two on the sides. And I remember when I was a little boy with my dad, I, he had to train me. You have to be really careful because if you grab if you grab them the wrong way. That spine will go in your hand and it leaves a little bit of poison and it's really painful, okay? Other fish don't have that. They have spines, but not like a catfish spines. And and then uh, it hurts. Uh, so you have to be careful. And then they live on the bottom, okay? Uh, they have long whiskers. They go around feeling for junk on the bottom. They usually eat dead things or stinky bait. You know, you just think, the stinkier the bait, the easier it is to catch them. And we used to catfish when I was a kid at night, okay? So they're in the dark. Okay. And so a lot of that, so in a lot of ways, people that do catfishing, catfish are like real catfish. They're bottom feeders. If you if you get contact with them, you can get hurt. They have spines that can hurt you. Um, and uh they work at night, like they work, and what I mean by that is on the internet where you then you never see them, you don't talk to them, you don't meet them. Thank you for taking the time. Really appreciate it. And you got a fishing explanation too.